So today's question that we got actually two months ago was something to the effect of why do different priests do different things in the liturgy? Now the very specific context of that question, I'm sure even you have noticed that Father Sampson and I are two individual people. He and I are not the same. I'm better looking than he is. <laughs> Our wives might disagree with that, but that's okay. <laughs> but obviously we are two individuals. And so when we celebrate the Divine Liturgy, you're going to see some different I don't want to say different practices, but you're going to see some different nuances in the way we do different things. For example, the prayer at the very end of the liturgy, and this is just one simple example of how we do different things, where I say, let us go forth in peace, and any prayer and I come down and I read a prayer, and you know that I read the prayer from here, right? I can't see you nodding, so I'm assuming you're saying yes. Well, other priests read the prayer from their reapili, from, from up at the royal gates. So it looks like we're doing different things, but in truth, they're, believe it or not, we are not robots. And the joy of the Orthodox Christian faith is that even though the faith is the, <clears throat> is the same, even though our beliefs are exactly the same, it's okay that sometimes we do things a little differently. But the things that are important, the things that really matter, we do exactly the same as priests. So for example, when we're holding up the gifts, as we call them in Greek, the aia, and we say the exact same prayers. We do all of the exact same motions on the things that really matter. On some of the other things that aren't as critical, you're gonna see different things. So that's a little bit, I know for example, baptisms. How many of you have seen one of the baptisms that I do so far? Well, it comes as a shock to some people but I take that baby all the way into the water. And I do it very quickly. One, two, three. Name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Other priests, it's kind of like watching Simba. Isto patros. To you. Two totally different ways to do the baptism but the baby is still immersed three times in the water, in still in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So I think that was the context of some of those questions. But there is another level. And in Greek, the expression is, kenurios papas, kenurio evangelion. It seems like every time a new priest comes, everything changes. All of a sudden, we're doing different things. You're laughing because it's true, right? It's true. Now I want to spend some time explaining what that's all about. Our Orthodox life is filled with so many wonderful traditions. We couldn't all possibly do all of them. Although our goal is to do more and more of our traditions as we grow in our, in our faith. But let's say, just for the sake of example, let's say that there were 10 things that every Orthodox Christian should do in their life. Fasting, praying every day, reading the Holy Scriptures, uh, going to Holy Confession, receiving Holy Communion, 
kefto, kefto, taking care of the poor, etc., etc. Let's say there's 10 things on that list that every Orthodox Christian should be doing. And let's say all of us are doing number three on the list. And so a priest is going to come and knowing the other nine things that we are not doing, one priest is going to say, let's focus on number two now. But a different priest would say, let's focus on number seven. And so on the surface, it looks like two totally different teachings. It looks like the two priests are doing totally different things. But truth, we're all looking at the same list. And my spiritual father, my pneumatico, emphasizes a certain way of life for me. And as your pneumatico, I take the life that I live and I try and share it with you. Other priests have a different style of the way they live the Orthodox Christian life. And so that's why sometimes it looks like fan it there, but it's not true. It looks like we're teaching different things when what we're really looking at is we're making a different emphasis so we can all grow closer to Christ because our ultimate goal is to be in communion with God, is to live like we are really connected to Him. And that's our goal. Someone, someone have a watch on? I don't have my watch. What time is it? 22. 20 till. Keep me, keep me on task. We're going to finish at 10 till, all right? So I want to open up for any questions. Are there any questions about this particular topic? Maybe you've seen something and you wonder why we do something a little differently. I know, for example, when I arrived, this is another thing, we do things differently in Tarpon Springs than they do in Clearwater, than they do in Charlotte, North Carolina, than they do in Chicago, Illinois, than they do in Denver, Colorado. Well, I'm not from here. And I have lived in other places, and I have been a priest in other places, and so I've picked up some of these other beautiful customs and traditions. And so by God's grace, as we continue to live together, I said this, if you remember, my very first sermon almost 10 months ago. I said that we're going to learn from each other. And I've learned a great deal. I've learned a lot of wonderful, beautiful traditions that are so special and so specific to Tarpon Springs. And they're all wonderful. But sometimes we have to remember I'm going to say this quietly. We're not the only ones that know what we're doing. Sometimes other people know what they're doing too. And Tarpon Springs is not the only way to do orthodoxy in the entire world, believe it or not. It doesn't make what we do wrong. It just makes what we do special and different. And so just as Father Samson and I are from two different places, the churches are from different places, and so you're going to see those different, those different customs coming out. Any questions? Yes. I was wondering, during the christening, now I have not watched your christening, but it, when we grew up, we <clears throat> Okay, so the question actually is about the 40-day blessing, not the, chris the christening, the 40-day blessing. Um, she grew up that only boys were taken into the altar during the 40-day blessing. If you've seen me, I take girls into the altar. Are you ready? Either no one goes into the altar or everyone goes into the altar as babies. This is something that we don't understand properly. We grew up thinking only boys go into the altar because the priests are men. But I got news for you. No one is allowed in the altar of God. 
men or women, unless the church has given them a particular function to do. Even I, I'm the dean of the cathedral, even I cannot go in and just relax in the altar, kick up my feet. I have to have a purpose to go into the altar. It is the throne of God. And so the truth is, men shouldn't go in there and women shouldn't go in there. You see the door says, do not enter. You know, no one follows that sign, by the way. We should wait at the door for someone to come and find us. Men and women, we should not feel free to just walk into the altar of God unless we have an important function to do. How many of you ever visited a women's monastery, a convent? Who do you think goes in to help the papa at the convent? Women! Do you think they're different just because they're nuns? But if you go to the convent, you'll notice the nun will go in, give the priest the thimiato, and then come back out. They don't just go in and hang around. It's one of the reasons why I've asked us to make sure the altar boys are a little older in age, so they can learn to properly behave in the altar of God. And so the question comes when we're blessing the babies, we bring them to God and all babies are blessed at the altar of God. And so my professor taught me either all babies go in or no babies go in. And so we bring boys and girls in. Now, not every priest does that. There are going to be some priests who watch this on the internet tonight, and I'm going to get a phone call saying, how could you tell your people that? But the beauty is that we have these understandings within, within our holy church. So it's, it's not a scandal when the priest brings a baby girl and a baby boy in to be blessed. Okay, does that answer your question? Any other questions about things we do differently? In the narthex, there's supposed to be, John, can you just make sure they're back there? There's supposed to be a stack of those Ask Father forms, okay? I want you to always feel free to fill out those forms and just turn them in. And we're gonna start including all of your questions week after week as we have our, as we have our sessions. Next week's topic, and you'll always know next week's topic in advance, right? So Father Samson wrote next week's topic here. Is it appropriate to kiss icons around the church before and after we receive Holy Communion? So we're going to talk about that topic next week. It's a very important topic. Any other questions? Yes. Why do priests wear black robes and white robes? Do you mean black like when we're walking on the street, but white when we're in the church, or what do you mean? So there's a difference between what we wear on the street and what we wear in the services of the church. So my vestments, right, so this is a full set of vestments that I'm wearing, is only for the divine liturgy, for example. I don't wear this when I go out on the street and have café. What you saw, the black robe, and I have a blue, I have a gray, I have a black. Those are our street attire. That's what we wear, that's our uniform, let's say, out in the street so people know that we're priests. And in America, it's about 50-50. Some priests wear the collar and some priests wear the anderi, the robe. It's about 50-50 in America, but the robe, that robe is worn outside the church when we're just doing our business, but these are our liturgical robes are during the divine liturgy, and they're always bright in color, white, gold, green, red, blue for the Panagia, except during Great Lent, they're purple. They're a dark color purple. 
And maybe if you want, if you want to write this down so I don't forget, maybe we'll talk about color as one of the, as one of the lessons, because all the different colors have different things in it as well. Last question, because we're out of time. Yes, and now you, you move past that. I don't know if you heard that back there, but the Russian priests, but not all of them, only the patriarch wears the white. The rest of them wear black in Russia. So we'll talk about that. If you want to write that down so I don't forget, we'll have a whole topic on just the different colors that the priests wear, the different colors that you see in church. I do wear gray during the day. That's my every day on Diddy, I wear gray. All right, so if there's any other questions, write them down on the form. John, were they back there? They're not back there? Are they in the bulletin? Are they in here? Uh, no, they're not. Okay. Write them down and give them to John and he'll make sure I get them, okay? I hope this is going to be a, a, a blessing for us. It's very